Everything is new with the Fashion Industry Awards South Africa, including what's about to come up now. The Raw and Real Fashion Talks, hosted right here at the ultimate Leonardo All Suite Luxury Apartments, situated in the heart of Santon, where you can dine, wine, eat, relax, or move in. Welcome to the Fashion Forum Group Raw and Real Conversations. My name is Lisa Medibe and today we are at the Leonardo Hotel and I am sitting with a fabulous group of fashion industry key players and we will be unpacking the past, the present and the future of the fashion industry and its value chain. Firstly, Anna Marie, tell us about your role in the fashion industry. Thanks for inviting me to these amazing talks um, that we're having, Lisa. Um, I've been in the industry for about 20 odd years. My name is Anna Marie Clarsen. I started off as a women's wear designer. Amazing. And through the years, I have worked with different designers. I've done product development. I've worked with SA Fashion Week. Mm. Um, the things that I'm really focusing at the moment is helping, mentoring young, young designers, helping people with product development, doing exhibitions, which I totally love. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like different, in, different areas in the industry. Next, we have Craig. Firstly, what I wanted to say is, Anna Marie didn't mention her clothing <laughs> label. It's Cotton and Twill. Cotton and Twill is like one of the most incredible labels yeah. in the country. She's been there at the start of Fashion Week, pretty much, in South Africa. I must tell and you. she's an integral part of the yeah. industry. <laughs> I must tell you, she did my matric dance dress. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. um, in terms of myself, I actually come from a completely different background. Yeah. I was in media. Oh, great. I was sitting there in the front row of Fashion Week and loved it and stupidly thought I could do this <laughs> and started a label. And little did I know how difficult it is. Yeah. Um, but um, what I wanted to do with my clothing label was to tell African stories through Amazing. clothing. And Vindutsi, my clothing label, that's the name of it. It's inspired by a sacred lake by the vendor people. Amazing. And I try to be as sustainable as possible in what I do. Oh, that's amazing. We love sustainable fashion. Next, we have Fadzi. Welcome. Please tell us about your role in the fashion industry. My role in the fashion industry, I come from a company called Exodus Factory, mm -hmm. which I started um, about 10 years back. Uh, what we do there, we do manufacturing mostly for young designers. We do for people who sell online for boutiques as well, school uniforms. But we wow. specialize mostly in uh, pleating. Nice. And the pleating part of it, uh, it's a, something I inherited from other people. It was a company owned by a lady called Pamela Schweitzer. Yes. Now she's moved to, to England. So when she left, there was so uh, she was also running belts and buttons. Yes. We cover belts and cover buttons, so mostly things when they're not happening nice on the manufacturing, there's always the covering of belts where we can get uh, income. And also I've got a fashion label called Exodus where we make our own designs. It's oh, an great. urban classic wear for women. Yeah. Like what I'm wearing is our you own look gorgeous. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. Great. Mm -hmm. And then we have Natasha. Please let us know about your role in the fashion industry. Lisa, I own a business called Inner City Inc. Uh, it's a screen printing company and Great. we print on textiles. Okay. Um, most of our clients are creative entrepreneurs and people in the world of fashion. And um, what makes us a little bit different is that we print uh, manually, oh. meaning it's a craft, it's not machine made. And wow. the reason why is we believe in job creation. Wow. Also, we used water-based inks, um, which is more, it's non-toxic, it's eco-friendly. You don't use harsh chemicals to get it off your screens. Mm. Um, and it takes a really long time to do, so you have great quality control because you cannot do anything very fast. Wow, this is amazing. We have, like gold here and I'm really <laughs> excited to introduce the next <laughs> um, speaker who is Tabo. Oh, please let us know what is your um, role in the fashion industry. Uh, my name is Tabo and I run a label, a brand called Sober Design House. It's an exclusive luxury wear for ladies. Amazing. Um, it's very urban for very sophisticated ladies. We supply boutiques in and around the country. I run my own production plant where we do everything in-house and um, 
I've been doing this for 16 years now. And uh, we've basically supplied for over about 27 boutiques. So what I love most about what I do is having this team around me. I work mm. with such amazing people, so skilled, very highly skilled. And I'm also involved in um, the board of advisory for TUT. So I sit and I, I, I mentor students mm. and we also run um, internships for TUT, which is basically, is I'm great. alumni. <laughs> so that's part of my passion where I really like um, giving back, helping the young designers, yeah. grooming them. And yeah, um, it's been great so far. Wow, that is amazing. You all have been in the industry for so, so long. And I really, really am honored to be sitting and learning from you guys as well. So tell me, Anna Marie, uh, how have you seen the industry change? Um, through the years you've been a part of it? And what are the challenges that you face in the fashion industry? Well, Lisa, I first want to say thank you to Tsepo for, for mentoring the young designers. Yes. Because I think that's an integral part of the industry. Definitely. Where we really have to give back and mm. like, let the young people in into our businesses so that they can learn from mm. us. And and I think I find in, in the factories as well, because there's a lot of older older people in the industry and there's yes. not a lot of young people coming in. So if we let them into our businesses, I think that's a very integral part of how they can grow in the industry yeah. and how we can grow the industry together. 100%. And um, I think Natasha mentioned that, you know, it's all about job creation uh, exactly, and that's what it's about. Exactly. Yeah. And I know Natasha also, like, trains a lot of people and mentor people as well. Yeah. And she always has time for, for all the young designers <laughs> who want to come and and, and chew her ear off about yes. um, how to print, how to do this, how can we make our brand amazing, how can we make a difference with designing our own own creations and designing our own fabric. Great. Because that is really a challenge in our country. I mm. mean, um, the, 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 the material that we bring in, because they have to bring in so, mm. so much of a certain print, yes. a lot of the designers are using the same print. Got it. And, and then we kind of lose a little bit of our aesthetic. So I think it's really important to have somebody like that that can mm. do that and mm. have somebody like Fatsani who can do the pleating for us so we can change our fabrics up. And have your own identity. And make it, make it new and exciting, Got make it. it different. Got it. Yes. So now, Craig, tell me, um, from, what was the transition from being in the media industry and then deciding to um, start your own label. What what happened there for you to tap into the fashion industry? It literally was, in, in terms of my journey, it was about um, trying to find a way of celebrating who we are. Mm. And I just thought, I mean, at that time when I started my clothing label, um, we, we uh, I saw so many amazing elements of our culture that I wanted to celebrate. And like for me, the vendor culture in particular, mm. I thought it felt so modern and fresh. Um, but in terms of the media landscape, I think we talk about fashion and, and media is also a very integral part of it. And I think that um, there, there needs to be um, a little bit more education. So we have at this moment in time how the industry has changed for me yes. is there's so much um, emphasis on social media. Got it. But yeah. what we have is people who don't actually have an education mm. about who was in the industry, um, how the fashion industry operates. Yes. So I think almost it's like having conversations and building relationships with people to let them know who came before in the industry so that they can have a bit of more education before they just post a picture of something and say whether or not they like it or don't like 100 percent, and i think that's where tipo comes in with her trading uh tell us how that works you wear many hats how do you cope um uh, running a sustainable uh fashion label and also educating um um you know fashion students about the industry you know, I, I don't take it very lightly. Mm. I think I'm very privileged to mm. actually be doing everything in-house. So everything is happening around me all the Amazing. time. Amazing. And bringing in young ones just to watch and spend days helping out each station from the cutter to the machinist to the presser to everything. I don't feel like I lose anything. Yeah. It's really just about um, exposing them. And integration. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and, and what I like about where I'm going in terms of my career is really getting uh, more in detail as to because I found that after I studied mm. I didn't know anything still mm. after mm. graduating I walked away and I'm like 
what do we do? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I, I, found, I, I found that very embarrassing. Mm. And I had to learn a lot more even after school because those textbooks, they don't do much for you. Mm. So I, li I, I like engaging young people and, you know, they, they get excited just seeing it happen all yeah. the time. Yeah. And I got a piece of that when I was also in the retail industry. Yeah. I was working in the head office of a big retailer and it's so supersized, it's so huge and intimidating where mm. there's like 300 machinists. Mm. And I thought, I'm going to do this, but I'm going to micro... Manage. Micro size it. Yeah. I'm going to size yeah. it down to yeah. a, a manageable place because mm. there's a lot of disadvantages about having these big production plants, you Got know. It. The lead times are, are crazy and the intensity of the work, but I found a way to simplify it. Mm. And I feel like any designer can have a chance yeah. to, to, to get that right in that size, you know. Yeah. So I, I, I like giving back in that sense where uh, we're living in an age where everybody's a designer. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, yeah. so <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that environment because that's where people actually realize that it's not all glam. Yeah. It's not all about being glamorous. And yes, we do do your fashion weeks. I do showcase a collection every every season yes and i think that's all people get to see they don't see the the, the intestines the guts of the business mm, yeah and Absolutely. It, that's and, where people and really is... learn and you can see their eyes these girls you know yeah. these little girls yeah. and guys that come there yeah that, wow okay now i'm really involved because yeah. it's dirty before it looks all glamorous there yes. so can i add on something that you just said yes you were saying that we're living in an age where everybody's a designer mm. and that's where we mostly come in mm. most people they sell their clothes on instagram online mm. most of those people are not designers exactly. mostly they don't yeah. know so they usually come to us and they just can you help me start this brand that's how we I say see. we start them we are from scratch yeah. And we just give them the final product. Just ask them, like, what do you do? What's your style? What do you want Got to it. do? Most of them usually don't even know where to get fabric, where wow. to get cotton, where to get zip. So we give them that information. We take them step by step. And from sampling, and they say, take your sample, go and shoot it, yes. see how the people receive it. And then from there, you can come back with an order if you've got an order, but it's different, different uh, people. So it's amazing to see most of them growing. A lot of them on Instagram, we grow them and we started them from, from scratch because yeah. it's business yeah. for them. And usually most intro is, they're entrepreneurs. Some, they want um, additional work. They've got daily jobs. Mm. Uh, they just want uh, additional income or they've got no jobs at all. They're out of jobs because of mostly COVID-19 affected their, their jobs. And they just said, we want something, want to do something. And we've got a passion mm. for clothing. Mm. And this is how we, we start. They don't even know where to level. Wow. Like some even come without even a brand. They're like, what's your brand? I haven't thought about it yet. <laughs> no, go home, think about it, come yes. back. So those are the, 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 the things that we, we encounter. But we, we don't make much money because of the environment in South yes. Africa. Yes. But, yeah, but we just, you, as long as you can see that you help somebody get employment, you help somebody start their own lives, they, yes. yeah, they are busy with their lives, they are not, they don't know where to go. I love that that is happening in South Africa. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's really happening anywhere in the world. Mm. I mean, in South Africa, we have many people doing like amazing things, yes. designers. But I don't want to throw away the education that we got. Thank right? you. Mm. Like, yes. <laughs> we're sitting there. And I mean, and, and, and it's great that we have businesses like that. Yeah. I'm also doing product development, so, and I also mentor young designers. But the, the information that I received by studying... It's unmatched. It is, it is yeah. amazing. And mm. the industry, growing in the industry, learning from other people, that is also Absolutely. another another avenue. Yes. But um, I think we, we mustn't throw away the, the fashion institutions mm. because they are it's yeah. really integral it's and very really important yeah. to, the, yeah. to, to our industry. Yes. Yeah. Because we need those skilled people. We of need course. to learn the skills. Mm. Yeah. You don't, they don't teach you everything at the, yeah. at the schools. I mean, nobody can, can learn life skills mm -hmm. maybe there mm -hmm. but but you definitely learn by giving in a project on time that you have to deliver on time and our mm -hmm. industry is completely all about deliverables yeah. and i'm sure natasha mm -hmm. can tell you about yeah. that yeah absolutely and i appreciate what you guys are saying about education mm -hmm. and we see the difference when our young uh, bright and bushy tailed creative <laughs> entrepreneurs rock up yeah. in the same way as patsy said that they they just want to make things, but they are under the impression that they 
press a button and a and garment magic pops happens, out. Yeah. With yeah. the education, at least um, young people are exposed to process and development. Mm. And development and the time that goes into that mm. is something that is Certainly. not... Um, an overnight thing. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. you have to focus on the story and the philosophy behind what you are doing. There's definitely a process element that's missing from uh, the current situation yeah, where yeah. people want to make without developing. Without yeah. Yeah. And I think that's where the education element mm. really plays a huge role. But I think that's why you guys are still relevant in the yeah. industry because, you know, it's, you, you have so much knowledge. And although that um, life evolves so much with technology, you still are sustainable in the industry, and um, and 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 I agree with you. It's all about education. It's true. Yeah. I mean, you know, when we talk as designers amongst ourselves, this is industry talk. Yes. Secrets. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. always laugh. We, we the call secrets. these people passions for fashions. Like, oh, who do they think they are? You know, but it's it's not that we're being mean. I feel like um, fashion as an industry has been so to a certain extent, disrespected. Mm. You know, I can't just walk in into a theater and decide I'm going to do an operation today. Yeah. I'm going to be an OBGYN. Yes. But anybody can be a designer. Yeah. And somehow, um, to a certain extent, it demeans the, the technical knowledge of, of it. it. And that's what I stand for. You know, I mean, I've met a lot of people saying, I want to start a brand, and they know nothing about it. Mm. And it's almost like they want to you know, take a shortcut, mm. shortcuts, you know, mm. I can be a designer tomorrow, you studied five years, yeah. wow, what a waste of time, but it's silly, because um, mm. I feel like um, even with what I do with students, I, I work with um, graduates, yes. and people before they graduate, I have to have that foundation of knowledge, mm. otherwise there's nothing to build on, mm. you know, starting somebody from nothing, I, I'm not going to pick up people on the side of the street, come, come design with yeah, me, yeah, you yeah. know, it's, it doesn't work like that. Mm. There has to be that technical base, that knowledge, and I wish people would respect that about our craft. Mm, yeah. It's not, I'm, I'm not just a creative. Yes. I'm, a, I'm an employer. And an entrepreneur. Yeah. Mm. And a director. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I'm, I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> I feel a little bit partly responsible because I came from a media background, never studied fashion, <laughs> and I did this thing, and I often get these people who come up who also want mentorship, and I remember this one kid coming to me, and, and he reached out and he said, I really need your help and advice, and I'm sure I've got five minutes, let's have a coffee. And I said, How, what brought you into having mm. this idea? And he said, no, I wanted to be an editor of a magazine, and I realized it's going to take too long, so I thought, I'll start a clothing label. And I said, do you realize how long I've had my clothing time. label yeah. for? And ah. then I started it in 2004, and you might have heard of it like six, seven years ago, but there's been hundreds of hours that I had to learn from the beginning how to do things and yeah. to surround myself with the right people with the technical skills and knowledge that I could learn from. Yeah. So um, this idea about a quick fix, yeah. I it's think a, yeah. in fashion, fashion isn't fast. And that's one of my, my, my pet hates is this whole idea about disposable mm. fashion because we need to celebrate a garment mm. because people made it and there was thought put mm. into it to yeah. create it. Yeah. So it's a precious commodity. Yeah. Just like Natasha said, with their fabrics, um, with their prints, you know, it's, it's not a, a print that's just there. It's handcrafted, right? Yes, so it, it, is, um, it is time. It is, it, is, it is you putting your heart and, and your passion uh, in it. So please tell us about your prints. You are so right. And it makes me so excited to talk <laughs> about it because to learn how to do screen printing in South Africa, um, one of your options is to go study fine arts at the university yeah. and to get a degree. Mm. But no one in my factory has a degree. Wow. So the way you learn this craft is it's passed on in your family mm. or you have mentorship. Mm. So we, you guys go and just invite people off the street. We really like to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we love um, sharing that skill. Yeah. And um, the people that work with us I do see it as a craft. Everyone has to be really good at maths. Yes. Um, but there has to be a lot of great planning involved. And you have to be um, not precious about your craft. You have to be willing to share your skills. Right. And that's the only way that more 
young people will be able to learn not just how the craft work, but maybe do it as a, as a job. Sure. If you can print on textiles, you can also print on paper. You can, you can be an artist, but you have mm. to start at the bottom. Sure. You have to learn it somewhere. Yeah, what I yeah. took away from that was you need to start at the bottom. You don't start at the top. You're not already on the red carpet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't know how many times I started from the bottom, going up, falling. And there's started. absolutely nothing wrong with going that. Down. That's that's where you grow that's the it. most, yeah. right? It. It's true. I mean, um, my, my grandmother, she's the only designer in my family. Yeah. Well, she's late. Yeah. But she was self-taught. Yes. I don't undermine... Um, anybody who's self-taught, mm. you know, and, and, and builds themselves up. To, I mean, she was amazing at yeah, what she some did. Some people are just born with it. They're just born <laughs> with it in that sense. But yeah. like I said, um, it's the technical aspects that yeah. I wish people would get into because that actually makes you even um, a, great, a greater teacher. Yes. You know, to, I mean, the people that work with me, I learn a lot from them. And yeah. I'm, I upskilled yeah. some of my stuff. Yeah. There's a girl who worked with me. She, she, she's working with me. She started off as a presser, mm -hmm. but now I've gotten her into pattern grading. One Amazing. of the things that I think a lot of people undermine about what we do, we are engineers. Yeah. 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 One of the things that I love Your about what I do, fashion. we are engineers, yes, yeah. Yeah. we are. Yeah. And we're, it's not just a craft. I don't just sit there. We have patterns. We grade them. We make sure the fit is right. We make sure that, uh, you know, it can be modified. And even if I had to give it to a CMT, it makes sense. It's very technical. Yeah, because yeah. getting on a piece of fabric and just cutting like that, first of all, you have to start thinking, if I fall sick, my business closed down. Yeah. You know, and I think that's a lot of things, uh, a lot of aspects that people neglect. Mm, uh, mm. As a business, we're not just our own little people. I have to think about the fact that if I get a really big order, mm. I have to outsource the work. Mm. How are you going to outsource it when you don't have the blueprint? True. Mm. And if it's not done correctly, wow. you outsource 600 and only two of them fit. Sure. So there's a process. Yes. And that's what my experience in retail um, with the retail I was working with, yeah. I was in charge of those processes. Yes. If you're gonna even go as far as taking something to be made in China, you have sure. to give them a tech pack. Wow. You have to make sure that all the aspects are covered. Yeah. So that you can, you know, and that's what a lot of designers, um, makes them, it makes them afraid to grow mm. because some of them, they're just as good as that one garment on the ramp. Yeah, that's what they then think. Then the moment you go just, to them and you yeah. say, I'm a size 44 mm -hmm. and I'm, they don't know what to yeah. do. I think people think it's just that person wearing the dress and it's more than that. Uh, when we talk about sustainability in the screen printing industry, our focus is on um, usage of water and electricity. Mm. The chemicals that we choose, um, are they bad for the environment and mm. for the people being um, exposed to them? Sure. Um, the ink that we choose, yeah. is it uh, toxic, non-toxic? And where does it come from? Is it imported or is it made locally in South Africa? For my particular business, sustainability, it's more skills based. It's about grooming. Um, like I said, with the employees that we have, uh, it's also about your business practices. Mm. You know, mm. the fact that I'm sitting here and I'm not sitting in front of a machine yeah. is because my pattern is sorted. Yeah. It's sitting there, it's lined up, it's perfect. Mm. And I have the system running mm. and that's, exactly what I'm trying to teach to these students that come to me so that they see that the processes, the engineering part, right to a point where you see the dress on a shop front window, it should be able to happen without me being there. Sustainability is about being conscious about the environment, mm. about mm. celebrating our planet, mm. not causing harm. Yes. But for that to also happen, we need to create sustainable businesses that mm. continue to exist and can continue to support our industry so it can grow. So they sound, they, they are two different things, yeah, but they're two yeah, connected yes, things. Yeah. It's about helping our planet and helping our people and our economy. Beautiful. Just to wrap up the conversation, I'd just like to pose one question quickly, one line answer to all of you guys. What do you think is the future of the fashion industry? Well, I definitely think the future of the fashion industry is to get our people into the industry, our young people, because like I said before, 
the technical aspects of it. Young people need to get in. They need to learn. Mm. Otherwise, we're going to fall behind. We're going to have, we, we are at the moment at an industry where there's a lot of older people mm. and we don't have those new people. We need to bring them in. And this is why it's so exciting mm. to have these talks so people can mm. see what goes in, in the industry. And people can actually understand what the industry, the fashion industry does for the ec economy of South Africa. Mm. It's a really important part of the South African economy. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank mm. you. Craig? For me, I think the future of the fashion industry industry is changing the mindset among South Africans about the value of local. Um, mm -hmm. Too long we need to, we need to justify why our prices are what they are. Mm -hmm. And I always say to people, I mean, we have the most incredible organized country in terms of our labor laws where we protect mm -hmm. people. This is not a garment that's made somewhere in a sweatshop. So when I say, when people say, oh, I picked up a bargain, it was cheap. I said, someone paid a price for that. Mm. Whereas in South Africa, every maker that touches the garments is your brother, your sister, your mother, your wow. father. And we are helping ensure that they can put bread on the table. Sure. So help us help them by supporting Beautiful. local. Support local. <laughs> yeah. Fadzi? I just wanted to add what uh, Anne-Marie Anne said about older people being run by the older people. Those people are retiring. Yes. Most of them are going to pension. <laughs> mm. And if young people are ignoring it because they just want big money from the beginning of it, it won't work because we will need skills. We still need, develop, uh, we need skills, skilled people, skilled mm. workers. And we are running out of those because mostly if they are not old, it's foreigners, mm. and which is making a big fuss again. Mm. So that means our industry will die if yeah. young people are ignoring it. My answer is very subjective to my role in the industry. Perfect. Homegrown <laughs> fabric, grow the cotton here, keep it on the continent, Beautiful. work it, create jobs, y use it while it's still here. I think that would make a very big difference for everyone in the industry. Yeah. I think um, with the pandemic, what I've seen has happened within our industry is um, it's forced designers to work in a different way. Mm. One, of the thing we need to, one of the things we need to be aware of is that fashion is very broad. There's so many career lines within fashion. Mm. And I'm working very closely with the universities. You know, fashion shouldn't be one big of a course where you're doing clothing and the pattern and everything. Yeah. I want fashion to be more diversified. There should be fashion. Yes, we have these colleges, but we're trying to get universities into this kind of vibe where yeah. they can have fashion journalism, influencer, fashion influencer. Yes. These are career lines. You know, um, one thing we also need to realize is that at this stage, the children that we are raising or bring it up, there's careers that don't even exist yet. Yeah. And if we can motivate for that and, and wow. broaden our perspectives, being a fashion Shoot. designer doesn't mean you have to be with scissors and yeah. sitting there with a the tape measure. It shouldn't sure. be that anymore. Yeah. There's so many branches of fashion yeah. that are there. I mean, we were talking earlier, you're in the beauty industry. Mm. Fashion is also involved Be there. Mm. So it shouldn't be this huge bulk. Sure. Of a, of, a, of a course anymore. Yeah. There's 10 different industries within each fashion, wow. you know, leeway. Sure. Yeah. Wow, that is so inspiring. I'm so inspired to be sitting with you guys. Um, I hope that I'm going to wear each and every item or garment from you guys. Thank, Thank you so you. much for, our, for joining us today. That's the end of our first discussion.